Zack, The Secret Weapon, a biography from League of Legends, read to you by Prestige Edition. Zack is the product of a toxic spill that ran through a chemtech seam and pooled in an isolated cavern deep in Zahn's sump. Despite such humble origins, Zack has grown from primordial ooze into a thinking being who dwells in the city's pipes, occasionally emerging to help those who cannot help themselves or to rebuild the broken infrastructure of Zahn. A group of Zahnite children first encountered Zack when they were out skimming rocks over a sump pool and some of the stones were thrown back. The returning pool became well known to Zahn's sump dwellers and eventually drew the attention of a shadowy cabal of chemtech alchemists. Over the protests of the local residents, the alchemist pumped the contents of the pool into vats and carried the substance back to their laboratories for experimentation. Via a series of experiments designed to test negative and positive reinforcement techniques, the alchemists discovered the coagulate mass within the pool appeared to have psychotropic tendencies. Simply put, it mirrored whatever stimulus was provided to it. If treated well, it responded with childlike glee and playfulness. But when its response to pain and aggression were tested, the alchemists lost numerous augmented sump scrappers in the ensuing destruction. Most of the alchemists attributed this to nothing more than a simple reflex response, but two among their number weren't so sure. They questioned the morality of experiments that seemed entirely driven to produce a creature of unmatched aggression. When the pair dug further, they discovered the project was being funded by Saito Takeda, a chembaron with a notoriously violent temperament and reputation for bloody gang warfare. The implication was clear. Takeda sought to develop a fighter who could shrug off mortal wounds squeeze into places humans could not, and who would obey any command. They also discovered the project's true name, the Zon Amorphous Combatant. As they pondered the best course of action, the two dissenting alchemists saw more than just a mirroring of whatever stimulus was applied to the viscous gel. They saw behaviors manifest without any obvious stimulus. Behaviors consistent with sentience. They came to know the creature as Zack and concluded that he exhibited the behaviors of a thinking, feeling being. They brought their findings to the spindle limbed leader of their research team, but their concerns were ignored. Unwilling to let the matter drop, they began their own covert efforts to counter the violent teachings of the rest of their team. They sought to show Zack right from wrong, exposing him to acts of altruism and generosity. Their efforts bore fruit, with Zack showing sadness when one of the researchers hurt her hand and reacting badly when another killed a rat in the laboratory. Eventually, they could no longer tolerate the cruel experiments being done to Zack by their fellow alchemists. One night, during Zahn's Progress Day remembrances, when the laboratory was empty, they drained Zack into a wheeled septic tank and dragged him to a far distant part of Zahn. When their act was later discovered, the foot soldiers of Baron Takeda sought them out. But Zahn is a big place, and the researchers were able to hide from their pursuers. They had thought to give Zack his freedom, but Zack did not want to be released, for he now considered the two researchers his family. They alone had shown him kindness, and he wanted to learn more from them. In truth, they were pleased by his reaction, for they had become so fond of Zack 
that they considered him their adoptive son. To stay hidden from Takeda's men, they changed their identities and appearance, taking up residence in a remote part of the sump, far from prying eyes. Zack learned to mimic their voices and quickly adapted to shift his gelatinous mass into the required shapes to form sound. He lived alongside his adoptive parents for many years, hiding when necessary in sump pools or in the cracks in the cliffside rocks. His parents told Zack of the world in which he lived, how it could be beautiful and full of wonder. They showed him the moon rise over the sun gates, the play of rainbow light on the stained glass roofs of Zahn's commercial halls, and the bustling, vibrant beauty of their city's heart. They also explained how the world could be cruel and harsh, and Zack learned that people were sometimes mean and unkind, hateful and prejudiced. Zack rejected such behaviors and helped his parents where he could as they used their skills to aid the people around them without attracting undue attention. They did what they could to treat the sick, mend broken machinery, or otherwise put their chem knowledge to benign use. These were golden years for Zack, and he roamed Zahn through its almost limitless network of pipes and through the many cracks in its bedrock. As much as Zack was a sentient being, too much stimulus from his environment could sometimes overwhelm his senses and cause him to temporarily absorb the dominant emotions around him, for good or ill. Oftentimes, he couldn't help getting involved in aiding the oppressed and downtrodden against thuggish bullies, leading to rumors of his presence spreading through Zahn. Though the majority of tales were of him helping, others attributed destructive events to Zack, a factory destroyed or a crevice ripping open in a sump neighborhood. Eventually, those rumors reached the ears of Saito Takeda, and he sent a band of augmented thugs to retrieve what he saw as his property. His alchemists had been attempting, without success, to replicate the process that had created Zack from the droplets left behind in his vat. Takeda wanted the creature returned, and his augmented heavies surrounded Zack's parents' home and attacked. They fought back, for they were chemtech researchers and not without esoteric means of defending themselves. But their defiance could not last forever and eventually they were killed, despite Takeda's order that they be taken alive. Zack had been exploring subterranean seams far below Zon, but sensed his parents' distress and raced back through the pipes of the city to the rescue. He arrived too late to save them, and the fury that overwhelmed him upon seeing their bodies was unmatched by anything the Baron's men had ever seen. Zack attacked in a ferocious display of stretching, smashing, and crushing. In his grief and anger, he demolished dozens of nearby dwellings, and by the time the battle was over, all the augmented thugs were dead. When the heightened emotions of battle drained from Zack's consciousness, he was overcome with remorse for the homes he had destroyed and vowed to continue the good work done by his parents. He helped rebuild what he had destroyed, but as soon as the work was done, he vanished into Zahn's vast network of pipes. Now Zack lives alone, dwelling in the tunnels and caverns threading Zahn, and bathing in the emotions of the city's inhabitants. Sometimes this enriches him, but other times it saddens him as he takes on both the good and bad of the city. He has become something of an urban legend among the people of Zon, a mysterious creature that sometimes emerges from cracks in the rock or a section of damaged pipework. 
Most times, this is to help those in need. But in times of trouble, when the city's moods turn grim, his appearance can be cause for trepidation. Thanks for listening. All credit for these stories goes to Riot Games and League of Legends. Full details can be found in the video description. If you enjoyed this production, please hit like and subscribe. There's a lot more coming.